We'll sell it to this lady right up front. Nine million dollars. And uh, they decided to retire after many years of farming in this location. So we're selling all of their real estate for them here tonight. Due to new government regulations, new policies, and rising prices, every day a farm that's been running for generations makes the difficult decision to close its doors. But that's not the case in today's video. Today we're going to meet a farm that's worked hard over the years to diversify its products to keep that from happening. But yet, despite all of this, sometimes farms still have to make difficult decisions. Let's take a look. is Leslie Bull and you guys farm what? We're mostly an apple farm and we've done other fruits and vegetables and we do greenhouses. Most of the people around here they look forward to passing on their orchards and fields to the next generation. Lynn, what has been your situation? Why are you guys not passing it on to the next generation? My husband is a fifth generation farmer and the children that we have are not coming into the farm. They've decided they can have a better life, regular hours, rather than our farm. And it's difficult when you work your whole life to provide for your family in hopes that they would follow your suit and they don't always agree to that. They decided to retire after many years of farming in this location. So we're selling all of their real estate for them here tonight. We were able to sell the equipment that they had yesterday. And tonight we're selling all of the real estate that they own here. Um, now what made you guys pick the orchards out here? I know this is kind of orchard country. What made your husband decide that he wanted to be an apple producer? His father was a dairy farmer and worked in the factory to help support the farm. Um, my husband decided that he didn't like milking seven days a week and so it limited his social life. <laughs> so when he decided to take over the farm, or buy the farm from his father, he decided to do fruit trees because that's what his grandfather and great-grandfather had done. And so he decided he was going to be an orchard man, thinking it was just different than the dairy. <laughs> he started here with this home farm that he purchased from his dad, and then he started gradually taking over and planting trees, and until he had enough planted to make somewhat of a living before he sold all the dairy off. That's very cool. Now, how many, um, how many acres do you guys farm? 240 acres total okay. and we do all kinds of different things um, on some of the property we grow hay for the cattle or grain some of the property we planted into berries and other fruits apples weren't always paying it's very There's wise a lot of different crops you know mm -hmm. years when you just didn't have enough fruit to provide a living for your family right so we expanded and, and decided to go to farmer's markets. Oh, okay. We had a greenhouse that we started our vegetable plants in, and because of all the wasted space up above, we started um, going into doing hanging baskets. Oh, that's very nice. And using the heat source yeah. because you already have the, um, to heat the greenhouse, yeah. so you might just as well make more of it. So it was a learning curve, mm -hmm. 
but we decided to do that and as of today we have five greenhouses, four green um, growing houses and we have the one retail house as well. So you guys really worked to diversify your farm. Yeah, we have diversified because of that same reason, not having crops cover everything you do. Right. And we, when we switched over and did more of a variety of things, we decided to get into farmers markets because there were a lot of them just starting up. And it was just a really growing curve for us as well to go into the market. But uh, we've done that for 19 years and really enjoy the friendships that we've made through the market. Have you had good success selling your products there? Yes. Yeah? We have. And we had such a nice wide variety of everything that people would get to know you because they would ask questions about your farm, mm -hmm. um, how you grew certain things, if you use sprays. Right. Um, I was a canner. People are getting back into canning. Yes. So younger generations were asking questions and I could answer how to do certain yeah. products. It was informational and then I did a newsletter every week for our customers. And I would include what's going on on our farm for the week and who's doing what. Also included a recipe every week featuring one of our products. So you were kind of like the precursor to Facebook. You were <laughs> hitting on this hard. It was just something that I could have people connect with us as a family right. and what we right. did. Now, would you guys consider yourself to be a small farmer, medium-sized farmer, big farmer, or hobby farmer? Small farmer. And why is that? I've seen the industry in the last 19 years um, change tremendously that the Farmers that have orchards, they're buying up lots of land, they're doing this tight planting now yeah. um, with trellises, and um, they kind of have taken over. And when you don't have a thousand acres, you're considered a small farmer, and that's what we have been. Now, does that affect your pricing at all? Like, if you've got a big farm that kind of takes over in an area, does that? decrease your bottom line, or is it just maintain? It maintains <laughs> our bottom line. Um, when you sell your fruit, especially apples, um, you're kind of at the mercy of the buyer. Um, we send the apples to packing sheds, and they have packed for other farmers as well, and maybe the day they chose to pack your apples, they got a cheap deal, so then that's what you end up oh. with. Um, you know, maybe they bought for Aldi or Walmart, um, or if they sold to some other brand of farm, I mean, of market, they might get a higher dollar. So it just, so you take your apples to the packing shed, they sit there and they wait for someone to put an order in, and you no. don't have any say over what the price is, it's just no. a free market bid, like, I'm going to buy apples for five dollars. There have been two major packing houses in our area that have been had to recall apples because of listeria. Really? Apples? Apples. How did they get contaminated with listeria? Nobody really knows um, what happens and as a farmer you don't know what happens to them when they leave your farm. Right. Right. And now with the big things that have gone on in California, with the swine in the lettuce fields, the wild swine, Oh. There's more bacteria, so government has put a tighter control. Okay. Not only that, now um, to be an apple farmer, you have to have your orchards inspected. They come out um, and inspect your orchard. They have to watch your pickers pick. Pickers can't eat out in the orchard. They have to go out of the orchard to their car in order to eat. Really? They can't have anything on them. There's no jewelry. There's nothing. Really? No. They can't wear glitter on their clothes. Even if they're working, it doesn't make any difference. It might contaminate your apple. And if they find evidence of a wild animal in your orchard, your, automa your audit automatically fails. So you have to clean up behind a wild animal. <sighs> <laughs> and I can only imagine all the deer out there. Deer, 
turkeys. Oh, yeah. Uh, rabbits. Turkeys can fly, so. Yes. Hmm. And the government has also made it so that all the farmers around here fail this. I should back up. They fail this part of our audit, and it's we don't cover the apples when they leave the field to come up here to go to trucks. And they're not covered on trucks when they leave. They're afraid that a bird might contaminate your apples, but yet the bird is nested in your tree. Right, you can't get rid of the birds. The growing yeah. season, yes. If they find wild animals in the orchard where you're picking, then they just stop your audit and you can't go on that day. So imagine you guys have all these acres and acres and acres, hundreds of acres of cornfields. Now imagine walking down every row of your cornfield and picking up after all those mice, all those deer, all those turkey. Does that sound like a lot of fun to you guys? Now you guys are selling off your orchards and all of your orchard equipment and you're keeping your greenhouses? We're keeping the greenhouses and some acreage here around our home. This has been in the home for a lot of a home of our family for a lot of generations. Mm -hmm. And so we're keeping that and going to have our barn. We have a few beef cattle. We'll probably continue with that because we sell direct to the customer. Oh, okay. Yep. So we're not totally retired. We're right. going to have something to do. You'll still have that connection with your community and that, that yes. bond between consumer and farmer. So I get a lot of special orders from people who come every year and they order in January, February, or March what they want and I plan it special for them and then grow the product until really? mid-May for them. Yes. So are these like seedlings that they're going to take home and plant in their gardens? No. These are full grown plants? These are full grown plants like if you want a geranium. Oh. I plant in the size of pot you want, do the color the way you want it, wow. and then um, I also do hanging baskets, mm -hmm. a lot of hanging baskets per customer order. They grow beautiful. We start with cuttings that are from a good plant and not seeds, oh, and that makes okay. a difference. And if they're having a wedding, that's Yeah, summer. I was thinking that, that a wedding would be a perfect way to go, and I've seen people do that where you can go buy fresh flowers, but be able to special order your flowers ahead of time and have them grown and then like, that to me is a way better way to go, especially if it's in a pot and then you can like give it out to your guests or just plant a beautiful garden with it. Um, we do our geraniums in particular, we're well known for our geranium plants. We again, we start with a quality cutting and then grow them out and for, for Memorial Day, mm -hmm. We have huge orders every year that I grow out plants for people to take. Now, what are your goals for 2020 from here on out? Where do you see your farm going? Do you see it expanding, maintaining, or what? I think once our orchard land has sold, I think we're going to continue here on this home property and we will do the greenhouses. Um, my husband still plans on doing a few beef cattle now, what thoughts do you have for someone like myself who's a new farmer or maybe somebody out there who wants to start a farm? If you don't have family leaving you the land, um, make sure that you look into all parts of farming before you start. Just be aware that when you take on that, what the extra cost is going to be. Now, as far as doing apples, what was the one single biggest obstacle that you saw? For apples this year, even the last two years, has been the harvest. Um, with changes in migrant workers in the H-2A program, um, it has made it very difficult to get your crop harvested. Um, H-2A is a government program that has come about, um, so there's not so many illegal aliens coming in to do your harvest. And we as a small-time farmer, we not only pay for the H-2 workers, all the fees associated with that, we have to pay a higher hourly wage, we have to provide housing totally, we have to provide beds, everything included other than their food. So we 
that's part of the cost, so it's increased our cost tremendously for harvest. Um, last year we participated with the H-2A program, a company out of Florida. In addition to the picking charges alone, we paid another 70% on top of that for this management company. So you guys can't like put an ad on Craigslist and find people to come pick your apples for you or do you have to be specially certified? No. We can hire anyone um, as long as they're not illegal aliens. Right. But there's not many people that are willing to commit to doing the hard labor on a, on a farm. And we have found that our Hispanic help that we have had, we've had families work for us for more than 20 years. Wow. But again, it's the stigma out there because they are Hispanic, but they're better workers, we have found, because they will work all day. They take a short lunch break. Um, they work in the heat of the day. Those that prune apples, um, trees, mm -hmm. are out there on a blizzard day standing on a machine to prune your apples for your next year's crop. Because obviously you, you can grow the world's best apples, but if you have no way to get them off the tree, and you and your husband can't be out there picking all the apples, there's no way you could collect them in time. No, 180 acres of just apples, that's a lot of apples to pick. Um, our good year, year before last, was about 8,000 bins for our small farm, which was a good crop. Good crop. I couldn't imagine us doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone climb the ladder. 7,999. <laughs> yes. All right, now are, are you and your husband planning on being on the auction tonight or are you just gonna stay home and let it run its course? No, we can't watch the auction going on. Yesterday was the equipment auction that was all online um, and we could Watch that. My husband At was leisure. watching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My husband was worried about that. Yeah. And so he was watching it pretty close to see what the machinery went for. Right. Um, but tonight, the land auction, they've given us the option of being there. But we have chosen not to go. It's just too difficult after being in farming this long to have to give that you know you're losing your land and what right. you worked for your whole life it's a part of you your it's land a is a part of, of you and what we put into it and uh, for my husband you know he's a fifth generation so that makes a big difference to him that he cannot pass this on uh, what is what is the price per acre that you guys are hoping to gain i know that snappy apple their auction went up on Wednesday, I believe, and I think on the top end they got 14000 per acre. Just under 14000 and that was one farm adjacent to ours. Um, I don't think it's all going to go for that by any means. Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be. We've known other auctions in the last couple of years have been 10000 but some of that was bare land and not planted. And so I don't know if people who are going to buy, if they're going to want all the orchards. Or, or maybe rip them out and put corn in or... Yes, we don't know that. And if that's the case, if it becomes a buyer is a person who does row crops or something, mm -hmm. they're not going to want to pay the kind of price that an orchard person would pay. So you're hoping that an orchard person buys it and maybe keeps the trees for a little bit longer and yeah. respects the work that you put in already. We know we have in the last few years really been tearing out old varieties and planting new varieties that um, are higher paying apples. You what know, are the like higher paying ones? Galas and Honeycrisp oh, okay. are two of the big. Um, Ambrosia is another one that people are getting into those and I think that because we've done that, I think if an orchard person does buy it, they'll keep some of those trees in because the expense of tearing them all out and putting the small plantings in is outrageous. So I don't think they're going to be able to do it all at once. They're going to have to do it at 
phase it through. Phase it through, okay. yes, once they figure that out. We just hope that it's not a land developer. Okay, and that's, that is a concern to us, um, that if a developer comes in, but we know that all the ground around here has always been used for farming. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that exactly. some farmer, even a young farmer wanting to get started. That would be really cool if you had like a young farmer that, you know, just had a bit of inheritance coming his way and he's like, how am I going to get going in apples? You know, there's peaches yet on some oh. of the farms as well okay. as apples, a few sweet cherries yet on some of the farms. So you might get into a diversified apple farm. Yeah. <laughs> that would be very neat. So. I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens. I'm hoping for the best. And whatever it is, I mean, you guys are very talented farmers. Most farmers keep doing the same thing again and again and say, why isn't this working? But you really worked hard to diversify, to look for those niches. And I think in the future, you guys will continue to find those niches and see what you need to do. Maybe enjoy our grandchildren a little bit now. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. Going to their school and reading to them, oh, yeah. to the class, anything like that that we can do to volunteer and maybe help a young farmer out. Yes, I think that is fantastic. I think we do need to find some sort of program where we can connect um, retiring farmers or older farmers who don't have kids to pass on stuff to younger farmers that are looking to learn on this stuff. I think we really Thank need you. to find some sort of program that can bridge that gap. Somebody needs to get on this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you. And I wish you the best with your auction today. Thank you. Your bid price will be for the entire 30 acres. If you not buy the acre, you're bidding by the parcel. So take that into account. $80,000 in the market, $80,000 in the market, $90,000 in the market, $90,000 in the market, $100,000 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 in the market,
I want to thank you for coming out. Appreciate your bidding and attendance here tonight. Had a couple of nice days here selling some good land up in the area. And if any of you are thinking of doing any selling in the future, please give us a call. We'd love to come up and talk with you about it. I'm happy to report that much of the land was actually bought up by cousins that lived down the road. So the land will still stay under the same family name, even though it's not going to be passed down to a direct generation, it will at least get another chance to remain in the family. And after talking to several of the other attendees that were Orchard people as well, everybody pretty much agreed that the land was sold for a very decent price. And don't forget guys, remember to support your local farmers and your local businesses because they really do appreciate it. Take care.